from prevailing thought? Okay, let's see how sharp she really is. The matrix employs a lot of constants that we're not used to seeing. Let's try a tough one on her, like the square root of 2160. The grid latitude of Sidonia's face, square root of 2160. How about that? The face knows the diameter of Stonehenge. Can Sidonia's face see all the way to Stonehenge? This is most embarrassing. Well, if it can see Stonehenge from Mars, maybe it can also see the global matrix itself. Let's check it out. Let's run the pi fractionals by it. Vector one-third pi, represented by Monk's Mound at Cahokia. Vector two-thirds pi, represented by North Bimini Shark Mound. And finally, pi itself, represented by the Great Pyramid. There isn't much chance it could see all of them at the same time. Could this low number stump it? Not if the Martian Prime Meridian centers itself on the DNM Pyramid, because the face centers itself exactly 00, zero degrees and 06.89 minutes to the east of it. Checkmate. The face got us again. But you know, nature is even smarter than that. She also positioned Sidonia's face at this longitude for another reason. Recall how the tangent of the Earth's equatorial circumference can be raised to the ninth power to show us the grid vector of the Great Pyramid? Watch what happens when we raise the face's longitude to the ninth power. I have three almanacs here in my study, and all three show the distance from the Earth over to Mars as 35 million statute miles. We do like to round off large numbers, but this figure is so close it's laughable. Nature, as we see here, also knows mileage in terms of statute miles, which isn't so surprising when we recall that she also knew the diameter of Stonehenge a few equ equations back. The grid vector on the face is 656.5612703. When we divide its grid latitude by its longitude, what an interesting arrangement of numbers, 6565. Let's put this one through the matrix mill too. If we can't find a misfire somewhere, we may have to live with this alien intrusion into our matrix. We need the astronomical test, Po, the procession of the equinoxes, 25,920 years, the most elementary of all astronomical constants. And since Mars is out there in space, and again, Sidonia's face answers with a constant right off the Great Pyramid at Giza, the square of double pi. We can't seem to trip her up. Maybe if we tried a different approach. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Moon, and Mars. Mars is the fifth body out from the Sun. That's five pi in the language of the matrix. More egg in the face. There's that number from Juliaco again the area of a 360 degree circle. The face can't be tripped. Mother Nature, the artist, couldn't have picked a more sobering spot for this face. And quite safe, too. There isn't much chance of our trucking it off for road fill. And starting tomorrow morning, I will get up early, go outside, and bow to the east, because nature is smarter than any of us. Really now, 
How far can we push coincidence? It has to have limits, and Sidonia's face has outstripped them repeatedly. One more test is in order. Let's see how the Martian face speaks to one of our terrestrial faces. Remembering that the human face on the Sphinx faces an azimuth of 30 pi, and when we divide its 5400 vector by 30 pi, we found the exact value of the radian. Let's see if Sidonia's mile-long face can talk to our mile-long face at Poverty Point. Sidonia's face has an azimuth too. It looks straight up at 90 degrees. Poverty Point's face also looks 90 degrees east. Take the Sidonian face's vector of 656.56 and divide it by 90 degrees. Call the result x. Then take Poverty Point's i, grid vector of 1 30th of the radian, and divide it by 90. Call that result y. Then divide x by y to find the exact value of 6 radian, the radian, the basic language of the matrix. What's the bottom line for Sidonia? A master formula based on the basic astronomical constant. CYFV here is the vector of Sidonia's face. DMV is the vector of the huge DNM pyramid. GPV is the grid vector of our own Great Pyramid, the cube of double pi. Whether we can live with the idea of intelligently rendered monuments on Mars is not the issue here. They are where they are, and they're talking to our terrestrial matrix, whether we like it or not. So call them whatever you like. The sweet thing about them is we can't get at them. Transportation is too expensive. And by the way, if we should someday decide to destroy our Greek pyramid in some stupid nuclear war, fret not. The mandate for its 480.347 foot height is safely stored away on Mars, 35 million miles away. All we have to do is put a 360 degree prime meridian on its DNM pyramid, like someone did on our Great Pyramid, and the work order remains intact. Because the law is universal. For the overly skeptical, the easiest way to dispose of what we have seen here in the past few minutes is to simply remove my prime meridian from the DNM pyramid. And it will all simply go away, withdrawing into oblivion once again, and leave us alone. Except for the curious, who, having done their homework, will realize that it happened once before in human history. You see, the ancients knew the vector numbers for Sidonia's face, 656. Six. They left them everywhere. Like in the outside diameter of Germany's Golo Circle, 656 feet. And over at Tikal in Guatemala, they're everywhere. Here on Temple One, the so-called Temple of the Giant Jaguar, notice the platform upon which the lofty temple rests. Maller measured it over a century ago, 6.56 feet high. The Temple of the Giant Jaguar is poorly named, by the way. It was the Peripheral Pyramid, as I will explain in my next video. The same is true of Temple Two, the Temple of the Masks. Temple platform is 6.56 feet high. And on Temple Three, Temple of the Jaguar Priest. And on Temple 4, the Temple of the Double-Headed Serpent, 6.56 feet. 
Mahler apparently did not measure it on Temple 5, though he did find the numbers when he measured the width of the staircase at ground level, 65.6 feet. This number is not without a certain significance to us today. 6.565 is the airy standard for computing the density of the earth. Judging from that, I'd say the Bible is right. There is nothing new under the sun. It's easy for us to believe that the Egyptians built their pyramids, that the Celts raised Stonehenge, and that the Maya and Toltecs built their monuments in Central America, all independent of each other. But these beliefs pale into insignificance when we suddenly discover that Tikal, Stonehenge, Tsin Sun San, Teotihuacan, the face on Mars, and the Great Pyramid at Giza were known around the entire ancient world. It is the helm of this ancient order which must be identified, a body of genius which prized knowledge above all else, and whose determination it was to ensure its survival through a dark period in human history, by way of a pyramid matrix system which still defies time itself, a communication clear and direct which we moderns lack the courage to even think about. Dogma maintains that we humans got our jump start in the Middle East. I'm afraid it's all a lot of nonsense, because they who built the Matrix were smarter than the Phoenicians, Egyptians, Hebrews, Babylonians, or even the Greeks ever were. And it causes me to wonder just where we did come from, and maybe even where we've been. Thank you.